Good evening. It's uh, Wednesday, uh, February the 24th, and hopefully you are like I am, having had some sunshine today, which is wonderful. It's Wednesday night, and uh, we're going to look at um, some things that might be helpful during the season of Lent. Sunday, I, I said that Lent could be a signpost that says, uh, slow down, uh, make sure you see what's here and you pay attention. Uh, Lent has been described as a pilgrimage or a journey. And not many of us would ever sit out for any kind of a journey without packing a bag. And for the Lenten journey, there's some things that I think that we ought to include in our Lenten luggage. Self-examination, uh, repentance, uh, prayer, fasting, self-denial, reading, meditating on uh, God's Word, all of those things are things that we should pack. Um, there needs to be also in there some personal reconciliation. Uh, and one of the other things that we might take with us on this journey is about our giving to the ministries that God has us be a part of. Self-examination uh, and repentance is, is a very important part of, of our Lenten journey. Uh, confession is a very effective tool for spiritual growth and it, it has to do with, uh, it's, it's a very personal thing, uh, but it also can be a communal rite of confession. Um, and there may be things that we as a church or denomination uh, need to repent of, or as a country need to repent of. Private confession helps us to particularize and personalize not only the confession, but the forgiveness that is conferred. Um, I think confession and forgiveness, actual confession and conf uh, con if I can say it, <laughs> forgiveness, uh, is a very uh, very blessed thing that I think is needed at times. Uh, and ultimately, confession is not about a list of offenses that we need to be forgiven for, but it is more about the relationships that need to be healed. Reconciliation, first with God. Uh, are there things in our lives that uh, have separated us from God that we need to be reconciled with God? Are, are there things that we need to be reconciled with other people, other church members, uh, even people in our families? Um, private confession is a, a very effective means of reconciliation with God, but often we need to follow that up uh, with specific acts of reconciliation with uh, the people around us. I think it's interesting that the Orthodox Church has a Forgiveness Sunday. It's the last Sunday before Lent. Uh, it is the custom to prepare for Lent um, on that day before Lent actually begins by approaching other members of the congregation as well as neighbors and friends uh, who may not be members of the church and ask them very simply to forgive any injury or offense that uh, somebody that you may have caused somebody during the past year probably good to think about that and see if there are things and maybe there are specific people that we need to talk to about forgiveness and having reconciliation take place uh, one way of incorporating this uh, into our Lenten luggage is um, part of our daily plan is to include excuse me include confession of sin in, in our in our prayers especially our evening prayer uh, taking time to review the day and collect those thoughts, words, and deeds which uh, were occasion uh, for sin and alienation from God and our neighbor. I know more than once that I've said something and, and it was not intended to be hurtful. It wasn't intended to be um, something that I, I, I was trying to hurt somebody with. But, but I realized, that it, and even sometimes it was later on, that I, that I had probably hurt somebody and needed to go back and ask forgiveness for that. And that, those are things that we need to be doing daily. 
but there may have been those things that have happened over the past year that uh, we've done and, and just maybe recently realized what uh, we've done was something that needs to be confessed and, and reconciled. And in, in addition to reconciliation on a personal level, we must also heal the divisions that we have among a congregation. Um, are there factions of a congregation that need to be healed? Um, between an 8.30 service and an 11 o'clock service? Uh, I don't know what might be necessary there, but there has been some friction in, in that area and maybe we need to think more about that and see if we can uh, be reconciled in that area of our own church life. So we have to identify uh, and repent of the sins, which maybe we think, you know, one service is better than the other. I don't, I don't know. But, but for whatever that, that rift may have been caused, we need to seek out and, and find out what it is and, and repent if necessary and seek reconciliation. And that would be good for our church to do as a whole. Another thing that comes to mind is, is prayer. The ancient definition of prayer is keeping company with God. During Lent, we focus on our emptiness and our need to be one uh, with God. Someone said the full and the satisfied will not understand Lent. Uh, it's a season of need. It's a season of emptiness. It's a season where we recognize failure and, and, and absence. And only when we know the need uh, to pray can there be a Lent for us. Someone else has written that our prayer time should be some of the best time of each day, every day. And, and your prayer time may include Bible reading. It may include intercession. It may in include reading through the Psalms or, or singing hymns. All of that's part of prayer. Um, and, and don't just think that saying the words of, of prayer are the only thing. Uh, I keep my hymnal nearby when I pray because sometimes... Only in those words uh, can I truly pray. And our prayer time should also include silence, silence and, and, and quiet listening. You know, we do a lot of talking, but sometimes we don't stop and listen and hear what God is saying. Uh, be still and know that I am God. I, I want to read an ancient prayer that is used daily during Lent, uh, during uh, some denominations. Uh, it's 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 very important. I think it's 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 the prayer of Saint Ephraim of the Syrian. It says, "O Lord and Master of my life, take from me the spirit of sloth, despondency, lust of power, and idle talk. But grant rather the spirit of chastity, humility, patience, and love to thy servant." Yea, O Lord and King, grant me to see my own transgressions and not to judge my brother, for blessed art thou unto the ages of ages. Amen. Might be a good prayer to begin with as we go through Lent. Well, now I'm going to stop preaching and go to meddling. <laughs> One of the things that our culture has truly left out is the spiritual discipline of fasting. Um, a true fast is total abstinence from any food for a period of the fast. Um, and I'm not sure that you know going that far of total abstinence of food is something that is necessary. Uh, Ash Wednesday and Good Friday are fast days, and, and it's the custom for all who are able to give up food entirely on both of those days. And if you can, that's fine. But I think fasting has more to do with the attitude than with how much we give up. Um, in some traditions, all forms of self-denial uh, relating, relating to food are called a fast, but in the West, it's generally been the custom to refer to 
many of these practices as, as abstinence, uh, a modified fast, which means giving up particular foods, such as meat on Friday, uh, or, or the little boy that I talked about on Sunday who was going to give up, not candy, but hard candy. Um, if we think of fasting as a form of self-denial, it's also possible and appropriate to extend the notions of fasting and abstinence to include activities other than eating. Maybe giving up television for a few hours a day or giving up media for a few hours a day. Uh, not picking up your cell phone for a while. Uh, and, and, and not just giving those up, but while you give them up, realizing that you don't have them, uh, let it be a reminder as to why you're doing that and and go to God in, in prayer and meditation and see what those fastings uh, can can lead you to. Um, so so what's the spirit of fasting? Why, why do we fast? To make any sense, fasting must have a constructive purpose and be defined in positive, not negative terms. I'm going to give up this. I'm going to give up that. That's okay, but, but there needs to be a, a reason, a positive reason for the fasting. And most simply, fasting is about freedom. It sets us free from slavery. Fasting is not about giving something up, but about freeing ourselves from the control of outside forces and temptations. And I think that media in our day and age may be one of those things that has uh, held us uh, hostage because we become addicted to those things. So fasting may be saying to ourselves when we have surrendered control of our lives to bad habits and dependencies that, that we are going to give those up to God and let God lead us in a better way. Uh, fasting is about taking control of those things that threaten to control us. Uh, remember, Jesus Christ has set us free and yet, we can come back under bondage, and, and normally we think bondage to sin, but we can come under bondage to a, a lot of things. Um, some people suffer from addictions that rob them of their freedom, and uh, sometimes I don't think they, the simple things like having our cell phone on all the time, uh, they slip up on us and we don't realize uh, how much we have been... Uh, uh, captured by those things. Um, and, and for many of us who aren't uh, clinically addicted, life still has a lot of distractions that can take control of our lives in subtle ways. Um, think about losing your power. I know during all this ice storm, a lot of people have, and especially when we think about those people in Texas. But here in Richmond, the south side of Richmond is, has been devastated. Um, but when we lose power, it reminds us of how dependent we are on those resources that are beyond our control, but uh, how different our lives might be without television, email, <laughs> uh, and, and, and all those other things. Now, there, don't get me wrong, there's, there's a lot of good things about modern technology. I use it all the time. A lot of labor saved, uh, you know. I, I'm glad that I don't have to chop wood uh, and, and, feed a, and feed a fireplace uh, to keep me warm. I know there's some of you who do, and Lord bless you. <laughs> but the problem is a lot of times in, in those things that we save time, uh, we don't give it to God or to do positive things. Uh, but we end up getting becoming slaves uh, to other things that take up our time and energy that we've gained. Uh, fasting for food or certain kinds of food can, can be a major problem. Do we eat to live or do we live to eat? Um, this is not saying that food shouldn't be enjoyed. I would never <laughs> say that. But in our culture, eating disorders, dieting, weight loss pills, liposuction treatments, stomach stapling uh, are all symptomatic of the way food can be a hindrance to all of our life. And our physical life affects our spiritual life. Um, you know, when we think about giving up something, well, I'll give up candy, I'll give up dessert, I'll give up smoking during Lent or whatever. 
Uh, the problem for that is if it's good for us during Lent, then it's probably good for us the rest of the year to give up those things. Uh, giving up something um, for Lent, uh, it, it, it trivializes fasting. Fasting is about taking control of our lives in, in a positive way. Um, and, and we have to admit, for those of us who live in the Western world, fasting uh, in food is it, it, not much you know, of a sacrifice. Uh, because we have food all around us all the time and know that when we fast there will be food at the end of the fast. Uh, but in, in some places of the world, you know, where people don't always get food, uh, fasting is a different story. So fasting is getting back to a proper balance. Uh, back to breaking the cycle of eating all the time, uh, eating what we need, uh, ensuring in, in so much as that we're able that uh, others have what they need. Maybe fasting reminds us that uh, giving to uh, food banks and things like that is a, is a proper way of, of fasting uh, by making sure that others have food. The other thing is we need to think about is using the natural resources of the world. Uh, you know, are the things that we use all the time sustainable and, and, and maybe we need to think about the things that we use and, and try to fast from those things that are not sustainable. Um, we need to think about organizing our time around activities that are productive uh, to good health, physically, emotionally, uh, intellectually, spiritually. Um, and, and maybe we fast from those things that aren't those. Um, maybe if we do a lot of sitting, they, they say now that sitting is the new smoking. Uh, maybe becoming more active would be a way of uh, not sitting, fasting from sitting, and getting up and, and being mobile. It would be good for our health. I don't know about you, but I do some of my best praying when I'm walking. Uh, uh, walking keeps me, uh, keeps my body uh, doing something uh, so that it frees up my mind and, and my spirit for, for praying. So doing those kinds of things. I talked a few minutes ago about the spiritual discipline of giving. Uh, fasting from food reminds us of, of hunger sometimes. And, and it ought to remind us of those who are hungry. And, and maybe during Lent, we could add uh, extra giving uh, to those places that help feed the hungry and take care uh, of those who are hungry. Uh, taking care of the homeless, the poor in our area. When you see those who don't have clothes, recently heard a story about a person who was getting ready to uh, have to go to an assisted living place and and they literally didn't have clothes they didn't have a pair of pants didn't have shoes didn't even have a shirt so that they could leave the hospital and and go uh, to an assisted living place um, we need to probably keep in mind that there are poor around us all the time um, and, and, and really pay attention by doing something about it. Uh, giving during Lent would be a good way to do that. Um, prayer helps us to see as God sees. Fasting frees us. Um, and, 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 and all year we seem to tolerate the intolerable uh, adults and children without nourishment, the sick and elderly, uh, people in, in prisons without visitors, refugees without homes. Um, it's easy to get through a year and, and just not pay enough attention to those things. And during Lent, maybe it's time that we give ourselves to thinking and doing something about that. Uh, the gospel that we believe in shapes a church that gives in many ways. Bread for the hungry, time for the lonely. Um, energy to change systems that oppress and torture and, and hurt people. And uh, we certainly have some of those things going on in, in our world. So if we are freed by our fasting and formed by our prayer, uh, then we can give during Lent. Uh, 
and Lent is not a time to make up for our sins, but to battle with the evil uh, of sin and to do some things about it. Uh, it. It's not something that we're going to get over with, but to shape the church into the kingdom of God by re-igniting uh, within us the passion for those things that are the things that, that are meaningful and, and something God wants from us. And so that's why we ought to give gladly because it, it, we are led by God uh, and as the people of God uh, to give to those who are needy. The other thing that we don't have a lot of time for these days is reading and meditating. Scripture, of course, would be one of the first things that we would think about reading. Uh, if we're giving up something, uh, maybe we're giving up a meal, we would take that time that we would normally eat that meal to, to read and meditate on the Scripture. Uh, We are the new Israel. We're, we're the redeemed by the sacrifice of the Son of God. And, and we are freed from sin by the water of baptism. Uh, and we are a people that has a, a heritage in, in the scriptures that, that really ought to mean something to us. So to know who we are, to know who God is, and to know what His will is for us, we need to know our history, our spiritual history, both individually, corporately, and, and as, as God's people. Um, a lifetime of reading and meditating on God's Holy Word can never fully disclose or exhaust the riches of His steadfast love and His uh, constant attention to us. Every time I read the Scripture, I may have read it a dozen times, um, it never fails that I see something new because God has me in a different place. And, and in that different place, I can understand something that I couldn't have the last time I read something in Scripture. Uh, the Bible is a book that we should never tire of reading. And its story is, is quite literally has no end. Because you see, when we die, we go into eternity. Uh, when Jesus comes back for us, we go into eternity with Him. So in essence, the Christian never dies. We go from life here on earth to a life eternal. And, and ultimately, the Bible is our story. Uh, though the written portion was complete many years ago, the story is so much about who we are even today. And it doesn't end with us, but uh, we should enter into that story and, and, and let the story of the Bible be uh, something of who, what it is in our lifestyle, and unless we are reading it constantly, and not only reading it, but stopping to think about what that means and asking God to reveal what we need to get from that scripture. So we read, we read it again, uh, we reflect, we meditate on what we've read, and, and I hope in that way enter more fully into how the Bible is our own part uh, of the story and I, and I think that that maybe if we begin that practice or spend extra time in reading and meditating during Lent it will be something that we want to carry on uh, into the rest of the year uh, because it is a year-round task uh, reading and meditating on God's Word should be something that's very much a part of our life uh, it's one that we need to renew and refresh um, during Lent, instead of giving up something, often I take on a new Bible study, uh, something that's different, uh, and it refreshes my time of studying God's Word. And so Lent is a time uh, that our goal should be to simplify, to renew the regular disciplines, spiritual disciplines, and reading the Scripture every day should be one of them. And if we have it, maybe if we do it during Lent, then we can carry it on for the rest of the year. Um, there's also a lot of good non-scriptural writing available that helps us to understand the scripture and the Christian life in general. Uh, there are those Christian classics uh, that if you haven't read them, get a list of, of them. A lot of the popular reading is, is, is pretty fluff, but 
there are books that have been written uh, and Christian material that have been written that have stood the test of time and continually change uh, people's lives as they read them. And Lent could be a natural season to add some of that additional reading besides Bible reading to your time. Um, and, and you don't have to read scholarly dissertations. You don't have to go to a commentary and read. Uh, maybe that would be good some to do, but uh, as you prepare is to have a commentary close by and to read. But, but uh, we're not trying to make this so heavy. It might just be a good book on prayer or, or a reflection on Christian community uh, uh, like Dietrich Bonhoeffer's Life Together. Uh, it might be a spiritual classic, uh, like even Christian fiction, like C.S. Lewis's uh, books, Till We Have Faces on the Chronicles of Narnia. <laughs> uh, there's nothing wrong with, with that. Uh, all these help to illuminate the Christian experience uh, and are worthwhile for reading, for reflection, for Lent, or any time of the year. So the basics of Lent can set for us a pattern for a lifetime of spiritual growth. If during Lent we practice self-examination and repentance, personal reconciliation, prayer, fasting, giving, reading, and meditation, and there, and there are others. If we, if we set about to renew those practices during Lent, uh, it, it can be what leads us into how our spiritual life is developed through the rest of the year. Uh, and, and, and Lent is a good excuse to do those things. So my prayer for us during this Lenten season is that we will slow down. We will pay attention to what is in Lent. Uh, and we will do those things that will help us draw closer to God our brothers and sisters in the church and the world around us as we seek to be God's people in the world. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time of study together. We pray that looking at the uh, spiritual disciplines that we might practice during Lent, that uh, we will take it seriously and, and, and sit down and think about how we can add to or develop our spiritual and devotional life so that during the rest of the year it, it can be a part of our life and we can go grow closer to you. Lead us through this journey of Lent, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Well, I hope we have some more sunshine this week and many blessings to you and I'll see you on Sunday.